What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where we learn, do, and talk about photography until we are sick of it. Uh, today I'm continuing my testing of the all new Canon EOS R8 and I've got it out here in the marshlands to see how it does as a wildlife camera. So I'm comparing it to the EOS R7 which is a camera that is the same price and sort of purpose built for wildlife but the R8 is built as somewhat uh, uh, of a jack of all trades camera and today I want to get it out here uh, in the real world and see if wildlife is a trade to which this Jack is a Jack. So the differences between these uh, two cameras, I think, are fairly well known and probably not a good use of my time or yours to elaborate on right now. But, you know, the, the R7, uh, which is the camera that I have mounted up, this is crop sensor camera so you have that limitation um but that can sometimes be a benefit because that does give you a little extra reach on those distant subjects um it can be easier to focus with this camera and uh it has it's more equipped with professional features like a very rugged weather sealed body dual uh, card slots uh sensor stabilization um uh, and and many other things uh, probably too many to list but which i feel like you're familiar with it shoots 30 frames per second with an electronic shutter that is prone to um, to a rolling shutter artifact, um, but it also has a very impressive 15 frame per second mechanical shutter. And you know, I generally find that that is just fine for me when I'm shooting wildlife. But it, you know, as a general purpose camera, it's somewhat limited. And if you have a question about like which purposes the camera is, is and is not suited towards, I, I have a playlist of R7. Uh, test videos that I did last year, last summer when the camera came out. So I'll link to that up, uh, I think, over here uh, in a in a card so you can watch the playlist if you have more questions about that. But, uh, you know, the R8 is an interesting proposition in that it gives you a full frame sensor and in some uh, cases, numbers that look like they would be better for wild, wildlife. It's got the latest autofocus tracking system and it can shoot 40 frames per second with an electronic shutter that is not prone to rolling shutter artifacts. So uh, I think this will be really interesting to try uh, you'll just bear in mind that it's got a smaller battery and, uh, it, you know, it's not built quite as tough as the R7. And so it's, it doesn't feel quite as confident mounted up to a big heavy lens. So that's sort of the broad overview of the cameras. And uh, what I really hope to figure out through in the field testing is how well the autofocus systems are at detecting and tracking subjects, what the autofocus hit rate is like. And I'm also very curious. I've come out uh, for evening time intentionally to see how the image quality and this uh, performance varies between the two cameras as the light levels drop of which the light levels are dropping rapidly right now i'm going to get the camera set up and start shooting and you know let's see how they do all right well i got to shoot what's here starting out with the r7 would have hoped for some more exciting animals but i've got some very sedentary and uh well-behaved red-winged blackbirds i'll not waste that opportunity we'll get them framed up uh and see what the r7 makes of them mentioned that I've got both of these cameras set to shoot on auto ISO <laughs> and that's because uh, I don't want to advantage one camera or the other based on the light level and my ability to juggle managing exposure and setting up the two cameras so if one camera I don't know selects an exposure that advantages itself over the other then we'll just say that that camera has won that comparison by virtue of its having a better metering system okay on with the R8 and framing up these red-winged blackbirds. Now, the very first thing I notice is that they're, uh, it's much harder to fill a frame with a red-winged blackbird on a full-frame sensor. I will note that neither the R7 nor the R8 detected the uh, blackbirds as an animal subject, and there, therefore there was no tracking admitted for either subject but it's worth noting that both of those birds are very small in the frame which you'll see in the example images okay so i'm going to go ahead and enable the electronic shutter on the r8 i feel like that is the way that it is meant to be used similarly i'm going to keep the r7 in the mechanical shutter 
never seen 40 frames per second before. Watch this white box flash around. Now in a 24 frame per second video, this is not gonna be a great demonstration, but every single time that white box flashes, you're making exposure. So um, uh, this is another important thing to keep in mind. You'll see it's still busy. With these Canon cameras, it's super important that uh, while the buffer is clearing into the memory card, the camera is completely in utile. So in other cameras, you can sort of uh, capture a few exposures in between and sort of fill the buffer while it's writing to the card. And you can't do that with these. So uh, getting a camera with a good buffer depth is very important. You saw that that was a poor performance uh, for the buffer there. I think probably less than a second of shooting you've got available before you filled the buffer and then you're waiting for the buffer to write to the card and missing important action. Uh, the R7 has a much more useful buffer. Now, I don't know if I'll have time to test it here. And if I don't, be sure to look at my R7 wildlife assessment video, which I will link to in a card right here. You may notice that I'm shooting off the screen a lot on the R8, and that's because it doesn't have an autofocus point selection joystick. So for these distant subjects like this, when it doesn't, when the camera doesn't automatically detect a subject, you can't sort of uh, use a the joystick control like you can on the R7 to put the autofocus box in the correct place. So uh, something to keep in mind, I, you can probably set up the screen to so that you can control the focus point uh, using the touch screen even with the screen closed with your eye to the viewfinder. So I'm moving on to trying to do birds in a flight shot um, and neither of the cameras is detecting the birds when they're against this busy marsh backdrop. So I'm having to catch them in the sky. Right now the R6 is not having a great success rate at identifying the bird even against the blank sky, but I am able to get some shots. Uh, you keep in mind that the, the birds are very small subjects to detect against the sky. So being able to get anything is is pretty impressive, especially compared to like DSLR type technology. Um, so we'll put on the R7 now and see how it does against the back. If I were shooting mosquitoes, I'd be spoiled for choice. Had some geese fly by the r7 was mounted up so it got them but uh, i'll throw the r8 on and see if we can't give it a chance to level up it's a big bird game so i just tracked a duck across the frame uh it was very small way off in the distance and that is the first time that either of the cameras has identified a something in the frame as a subject and it did put a tracking box around it but it struggled to stay with it even though it was moving kind of slow and um it didn't look like it actually got it in focus so we'll have to see on the test images whether or not it successfully focused on that duck you notice i'm shooting on the ball head that would not normally be my preference and it is a bit cumbersome but between the two cameras i i, I wanted to have a fast change out so that I wasn't um, fuffing with rebalancing the gimbal every time I changed camera bodies. I would like to see how these cameras handle handheld. I feel like that's probably going to be a big difference between the R8. It's, it's smaller and lighter, and that could be advantageous in terms of holding it for a long period of time. But it doesn't feel like... Let me pull it off the, off the ball head real quick. It just doesn't... It's not terrible. Honestly, it's got a good grip on it. Is a little light compared to the lens but I don't feel like it would be a reason to miss a shot. Quite frustrating the buffer fills up pretty quickly so uh, it's not necessarily that I'm wanting to catch the geese in some particular pose it's that they'll fly fly past something interesting in the environment like there's a pond here and um, I'll want to catch the geese right in front of that and it will be right into the buffer. So that is a little bit frustrating, um, but I think I still got lots of good shots fired off with the geese. I will say with both of these cameras, it is a bit difficult to gauge whether there's a real confirmation of focus through the viewfinder. They both have a relatively low resolution, I think 
2.36 or 2.78 million dot EVF. So neither of these viewfinders, I would say, especially great for confirming focus on small subjects. Okay, there's a bill here out in this levee. I've got the R8 trained on it. I'm gonna try and get some action shots. I got some some still shots. So uh, shooting at a 500th of a second and uh, metering for uh, 25,600 ISO. So I'm eager to see how these turn out. I don't think this is a test that it would even be worth bothering uh, with for the R7. I've got the auto ISO maxed out at 12,800. So we just get a dark shot there. So I'm gonna watch this deer for a little bit, see if we can get a little bit of action for today. Maybe we haven't had a great day of like stunning wildlife photography with really interesting wildlife, but what we have done is put these cameras to a really demanding task of shooting small uh, subjects against uh, very busy backgrounds. So um, we'll see which camera came out on top. So we're back in the studio after our shooting experience in the field with just a few final remarks on the R8. So this will be the last video that I uh, make uh, evaluating the R8 and various uses that I put it to. And you can see others uh, in the R8 playlist that I will link up here in a card. So I guess we could call this a final conclusion. The R8 pleasantly surprised me. I, in all of the uses that I put it to, some of which I thought it would be a strong performer in, such as the landscape, uh the video purpose and also for wildlife i think that i probably expected that this might be an area that it was least suited to because of its reputation for having a small buffer and also it's a somewhat dainty build uh, but i was pleasantly surprised to see that the r i really enjoyed the experience of using the r8 shooting wildlife with it the autofocus was uh demonstrably better um and the image quality was also remarkable. So I think that I should stipulate my remarks first off by, by clarifying that my wildlife experience with the R8 was by no means exhaustive. I only had the camera for one week and I put it through a rigorous series of tests uh, in different scenarios of which the wildlife was only one. So I only dedicated a few hours to that exercise uh, did not deep dive into all the different autofocus setting, settings in the menu and the types of things that people will do in more long-term reviews. So I do recommend uh, researching people who have reviewed the camera with more extensive experience. But I am confident that my experience, limited as it was, allowed me to draw some good conclusions and I'm going to share those with you now. So autofocus, fantastic. I have literally no complaints about it. It wasn't 100% effective. It was more effective than the R7. I think that was uh, amply demonstrated in my experience with the camera. Uh, and hopefully you found that useful as well. Uh, you should have high confidence with this camera in almost any autofocusing situation, with the exception of, of animals that are very small or very far away. So, right, that is just a, a, the nature of working with a full frame sensor and not having the leverage of magnification on the subjects. Image quality was also a strong point for the camera. So my, while I might quibble with the some of the decisions that the cameras made to meter, uh, I was typically working at ISO 6400, 12,800, and in some instances with the R8, 25,600. Uh, and the image quality still looked fantastic throughout, and I will touch again on that right towards the end of the discussion. So a major drawback to the R8 throughout the test that I've put it through has been its battery life. This was no exception. Uh, comparing the two cameras that I had with me in the field, the R8 was already had a bar dropped off the battery, even though I was only doing light and intermittent shooting with it. However, when, when your gear load is something like this, you know, uh, comparatively, having a few extra batteries is not, I think, uh, as big of a concern. My concern with the small battery, uh, I think, stems from my, the, my experience with DSLRs, where the smaller battery cameras had issues driving the larger uh, autofocus motors in these uh, big glass lenses. Uh, but I didn't notice any substantial difference in the autofocus drive speeds between the two cameras, despite the difference in battery size. 
So you saw that I had some frustration with buffering in the field. Uh, I mean, every camera has some limitation with buffering, but the R8 is probably one of the worst that I've used. The R7 is not spectacular, but by comparison, you know, between just these two cameras at this price point, if you know you like to do prolonged shooting, the, the R7 is definitely uh, the winner. And in other ways, I also found the R7 to be preferable, uh, especially those scenarios working with the small and distant subjects. Uh, not only was it easier to focus because, you know, the subject was just magnified across the sensor, um, but also having the 33 megapixels and condensed into that smaller area really opens up a lot of avenues for cropping. So if you're a small subject photographer, then again, that might be a time when you lean towards the R7. So conclusively, these two cameras have strengths and weaknesses that kind of play off of each other, which is great if you can afford both. Uh, but if you're like me and you can't, uh, maybe it's helpful to you uh, that I recommend the R7 for prolonged shooting uh, and also for shooting smaller subjects. And if you need a camera that is more general purpose, uh, the R8 is still a strong performer, especially when you're working with larger subjects in smaller bursts. Uh, lastly, I'll conclude by saying that we ran into that situation at the end of the shooting day with the that doe, uh, where the R7 was maxed out on its ISO, but the R8 was able to get not only a great shot, uh, but also correctly exposed. So I did catch a little more action with the R7. I prefer the composition with the R7 because it was able to, you know, uh, make the deer a little larger and more prominent in the frame. Uh, but with the R8, at least I got a correct exposure shot. And I'll say that I made the thumbnail for this video by cropping into that one-to-one. -one. So at 1080 resolution, the thumbnail is one-to-one. -one. If you're seeing that at 4K resolution, uh, that thumbnail is actually upscaled. So I processed the photo to taste through Adobe Lightroom. I did use the noise reduction, but I think it's a strong example that indicates that also for low light usage in wildlife, uh, the R8 definitely took the prize in that situation. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Once again, if you did, uh, I welcome you to leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, until I see you next time, you guys keep an eye out and a foot forward, and thanks for watching.